coffee consumption is ubiquitous. What you may not know is that coffee can actually have a positive impact on your health. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, local coffee enjoyer. Totally not staged, totally not cold coffee, totally not a tenth of a cup remaining because I forgot to keep this for the first nine tenths. What is coffee? Well, first of all, it is delicious. More specifically, coffee is what happens when you steep or infuse or whatever you want to call it, ground up seeds of the coffee cherry fruit. Contrary to popular belief, coffee isn't just caffeine, which blocks the adenosine receptor, which is responsible for fatigue. And so by blocking this receptor, caffeine helps you feel a bit more wide and energetic. Caffeine also does many other things within the body. The important thing is coffee is not just caffeine. Coffee has many active ingredients that interact with your body in a variety of ways, such as, for example, fiber. Did you know that a single cup of coffee can actually contain several grams of fiber, which if you've watched my video somewhere above here, you know is good for your health. And likewise, coffee actually contains antioxidants, which are generally beneficial for your health. And that's all well and good, but there's many foods with many ingredients, and if all I did was just mention random nutrients in random foods, you can come away from it thinking that french fries are the healthiest thing ever. But how do we actually know that coffee isn't awful for us? Well, to find out the answer to that question, I actually looked for the largest review paper I could possibly find. And that is an umbrella review of 201 meta-analyses, including both observational research and interventional research. Here are the results. The largest risk reductions, that's right, risk reductions, aka improvements in your health, were seen with three to four cups of coffee a day. And this amounted to a reduction in risk of about 15 to 20% in things like all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, cardiovascular mortality, even type 2 diabetes risk, some cancer types. In other words, to maximize your health benefit, consuming around three to four cups of coffee can reduce your risk of getting all of these things by about 15 to 20%. With that being said, I want to give you a caveat. A few specific outcomes actually saw an increased risk with coffee consumption. For example, the risk of bone fracture was higher in women when they consumed coffee as opposed to not consuming coffee. However, the same wasn't true in men. Likewise, for certain health outcomes, coffee consumption was actually linked with worse health, but these associations generally disappeared after accounting for other covariates like smoking, for example. So broadly speaking, coffee consumption actually seems to be beneficial to your health on the whole, unless you're within certain populations I'll touch on in a bit. Importantly, there is also some evidence suggesting that filtered coffee might be more beneficial for your health than unfiltered coffee. So coffee is good for your health, but I'm sure you've heard that coffee, or caffeine specifically, can also negatively impact your sleep. Is there any truth to this and what can we do about it? Well, caffeine consumption does absolutely negatively impact your sleep. In fact, a recent meta-analysis by Gardiner and colleagues found that caffeine consumption reduced total sleep duration by about 45 minutes, increased the time taken to fall asleep by about 10 minutes, it negatively impacted the phases of your sleep, and in general, caffeine consumption didn't seem to do anything positive for your sleep. Can we do anything to avoid the negative impact of caffeine, or coffee in this case, on your sleep? Yes, we absolutely can. The authors also performed a meta-regression analysis to see how long before going to bed you would need to consume different doses of caffeine for it to not impact your sleep. With 200 milligrams of caffeine, which can be found in a standard pre-workout supplement or in a large cup of coffee, you would need to have this at least 13 hours before you go to sleep to avoid any negative impact on your sleep. So if you're going to sleep at 10 p.m., that means you would want to have that coffee or that pre-workout supplement at least at 9 a.m., if not earlier. For a smaller dose of caffeine, about 100 milligrams, which is often found in smaller cups of coffee, you would be talking about having that dose at least nine hours before you go to sleep. So in the case of going to bed at 10 p.m., that would mean having that dose of caffeine at the latest at 1 p.m. The larger the dose of caffeine you have, the earlier you need to have it in the day for it to not impact your sleep. So generally, I recommend having your caffeine as early as you can get away with during the day. But let's get back to some cases or some populations where caffeine use or coffee consumption might be contraindicated. Specifically, if you suffer from severe anxiety, symptomatic cardiac arrhythmias, peptic ulcer disease, hepatic impairment, renal impairment, seizures, or if you're pregnant, large doses of coffee consumption might not be a good thing. Importantly though, even in this paper, they note that 
that these contraindications aren't absolute. Finally, before I run out this video and go back to drinking some good coffee, let me tell you what the maximum dose of coffee you could have is before you start experiencing either severe side effects or before you actually start risking dying. Some research suggests that the dose at which you start experiencing really substantial side effects like arrhythmias, tachycardias, and seizures would be around 1.2 grams of caffeine in a single dose. That is a lot of caffeine. That is around maybe six to eight large cups of coffee at once. And generally for most people, you probably don't wanna go much above four to 600 milligrams of caffeine per day on a consistent basis. And generally estimates of a life threatening dose of caffeine are around 10 to 14 grams of caffeine. So unless you plan on having four gallons of coffee at once and getting that much caffeine in, you're probably gonna be safe. Let me give you a few takeaways from this video. First of all, feel free to have three to four cups of coffee a day, provided you don't have any negative health contraindications. Secondly, on a broad level, Drinking coffee may make you healthier than not drinking any coffee. If you're going to have the aforementioned potentially optimal dose of around three to four cups of coffee a day, keep it far away from your sleep. If you're genuinely having as much caffeine or as much coffee as three to four cups a day, I would cap consumption at least 12 hours before you go to sleep if you want to avoid the majority of the negative impact on your sleep. Most importantly, Dark roasts on coffee are the worst thing humankind has ever done. It's reverse evolution. They've just gone backwards in time. Please don't drink dark roasts, stick to light roasts. I will die on that hill. AKA, whatever coffee you consume, it's, you know, to each their own. And with that being said, that is the video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about coffee consumption. Is it improving your health? Is it making it worse? If you would like me to coach you, take care of your training and your nutrition and lead you to your best progress yet, check out the link somewhere above to go to my website. And with that being said, have a great day and I will see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace. Sorry, I was vibing a bit too hard there. All right, let's get it. Pachycardia and seizures and seize. Holy shit, that's a hard word. Seizure, there we go. Pachycardia and seizure. Holy shit.